Hello, and this is the horoscopes for the Pisces full moon for the water signs. This I'm starting off now with Cancer. Um, cancer, right now the sun is in Virgo, which is your third house, and the full moon is going to be happening in the ninth house of Pisces. Um, this this the third house has to do with your neighborhood siblings communication writing handiwork stuff like that so if you if you study the third house topics i think it's like with that mercury in the third house you could find some good supports around that right now although i mean it's I don't know about how would you're if you're watching this and you have cancer rising, I don't know what your situation is with the whole lockdown and how that affects you in your your neighborhood and stuff like that. But it that mercury there does seem like there's some good connection coming from that kind of level, whether that's just people around town, whether that those are friends or siblings or whether maybe you're just on on the internet and you and you make a new internet friend or something and you have some good communication going back and forth or something like that. I see something like that happening. And the full moon particularly, and also with that presence of Neptune there and the full moon, there could be a very big kind of like spiritual message coming through that somehow ties in with that. It's sort of like the play between the mundane and the mystical or something, right? Like in your mundane everyday life, some you might have an, uh, a message come through that, reflects into a bigger kind of deeper kind of meaning or deeper kind of lesson so it's a pre and that is also um that that you've also got venus there in the first house um which is in a trine aspect to that full moon so there's something where it's kind of like it's kind of like a gift for your own self awareness or own self understanding that's coming through, um, and so that's pretty positive. Um, but I think there's there's some challenging stuff coming as well. Um, that that Venus in the first house is square is opposing. First of all, let's go to the opposition first. Is opposing Saturn and uh, and the rest of them in Capricorn. And that's the seventh house. So the seventh house has to do with relationships, could also do with enemies, could also have to do with clients. Um, but there's some sense of major difficulty coming up either in your relationship somewhere. And that I think that at least with this is that with the seventh house sometimes it helps to look at things in terms of like what you know what is being reflected to us in the other and what's that showing us something about our own blind spots right um and with that full moon in the ninth there could be some kind of a opportunity to have some kind of like revelation or insight or something like that but the insight's kind of born out of some kind of conflict or drama or something like that in relationship um and further kind of adding to that conflict you've got mars in the 10th now mars in the 10th it's well dignified there but it's coming up it's in a square kind of aspect against all that stuff in the seventh house so whether that could be difficult clients you're dealing with or sort of like drama in friendship and relationship and that taking its toll on you and you not being able to be at your best professionally well there's some kind of there's some kind of like real grind that's happening around this and it's not going to be over quick because mars is going to go retrograde and it's going to keep you know it's going to go through all these squares over and <laughs> for like it's just going to be kind of brutal to be honest um <laughs> I'm not. I'm just trying to give it to you straight here, as the best I can. Um, but 
like I think the good news here is that the full moon represents a kind of illumination and that's happening in the ninth house so there should be something that is like a opportunity to s in, in the midst of all the conflict and not even in spite of it but maybe the conflict and the dramas and the stresses in life may be bringing something to the surface which needs to be seen and that if you can if you can get a valuable lesson out of it then you can start to see how all the drama and the stress and stuff like that is really there to help you right and it's not something even the the stuff that's a real pain in the ass um you know it's like you need the bitter medicine because maybe that's the st the the only stuff that's going to work right now right like um You've also got something interesting where you've got a the the Uranus is doing that trine to the sun and the third, so there could be some kind of like change in your neighborhood or what you're doing in your daily routine or something like that. Um, that's another interesting one. I'm kind of focused more on the inner, like not the modern outer planets though, and be more traditional about about it. That's kind of just the direction I feel like going in, but. I was kind of wondering about how much I should read into these these Uranus trines that are happening around the full moon. Um, so that's Cancer. Um, let's go to Scorpio now. Let me just I'm just flipping through my notes here. So Scorpio, well. Yeah, so this is a funny one for me to read because I've got Scorpio rising. So, I mean, I try to try to speak about it more neutrally without feeling like <laughs> I'm just trying to give myself a horoscope reading here. But you've got the lunation here. You've got sun and Mercury in 11th opposing moon in 5th. So sun, the 11th house has to do with basically your the help that you get to reach your goals and ambitions and fulfill your desires and do what you want to do in life and stuff like that the good old helping house of good spirit and having mercury there in the 11th house is a particularly good time for making connections with other people who can assist you and help you with what you want to do and the full moon the fifth has to do with kind of like your creative output, what kind of product you're bringing to the world and stuff like that. So for all things to do with like advertising or so networking or make, having the right hookups and being helped out, it's generally a good time for that kind of stuff. However, there's some problems as well. Um, namely, when you look at the third house, there's a big kind the Jupiter is in its fall in the third house and Saturn's there and, and so it creates a generally there's a kind of obstacle around like the neighborhood or like the local the kind of like the general milieu that you find yourself in may not really be the right kind of fit but mercury is trying to do its best to sort of help out with that even though there might be some problems um, however, it's even more difficult once you consider the fact that uh, Mars is squaring it from the sixth house. So that, I mean, sixth house has to do with things like health, illness and sickness, has to do with um, kind of manual labor and grunt work and stuff like that. Um it also has to do, I mean, I think it sometimes has to, with Mars and Aries in the sixth, it could also do with fighting and kind of disruptive things. I think, I think the sixth house also kind of works for mental health and stuff like that. So there could be kinds of like, you know, that fiery, aggressive, disruptive moodiness and stuff like that. And that kind of like squaring off against, you know, it could be. Uh, third house has to do with siblings, so it could be like the kind of themes that come up with like squabbles with you know the sibling rivalries, or not getting along with your neighbors, or um, that those kinds of tensions could be coming up. You've also got Venus in the ninth house, which is nice because it has to do with um, 
you know, Venus is there in the house that has to do with spirituality and a higher learning and higher understanding. So there could be, you know, themes coming up around, you know, how, where do you get your, um, you know, looking for a higher truth or a higher understanding. And, and that could be kind of like maybe feeling a bit at odds with the the circumstances of your everyday life neighborhood situation um uh and that's and that's also squaring off against that mars in the sixth and the mars in the sixth could be um yeah like it could it, it wouldn't. It's the one thing that the, the Mars in the six could be good for, though, is especially with that square to Saturn, is some exercise, um, self care, but maybe more of the kind of like high cardio kind of self care, like really kind of like working hard kind of thing. Um, it could be like getting doing some just like really manual work or something like that to just burn off some steam, like that might help. Um, and um yeah like and then maybe if, if you do some of that then that might sort of quiet down the mind by burning off some energy and kind of like allow some of the um the bigger messages from that venus in the ninth to come through right but there's there's a kind of like kind of, there's a real kind of grinder tension going on w with between mars and saturn and that's kind of in the long haul here because it it kind of goes on till for the rest of the year in into leading into 2021 um so that's that's kind of like what i'm getting when i look at uh when i look at scorpio here um so last but not least we have pisces so pisces you've got a Sun and uh, Mercury in your seventh house, and the Moon your first. So, with a well dignified Mercury in the seventh, I would say that probably has things are looking up right now in terms of relationships, um, one way or another. Um, and what they often say about relationships is that the relationships show us something about ourselves. So, there's something some kind of a message coming through from the relationships that are going to, that are give us some self insight, some self awareness in a kind of, in maybe in a more emotional way with that moon, the first, like to bring up some you know, emotional insights of how we're, what makes us tick on that kind of, I don't know why I'm saying us because I'm not a Pisces <laughs> rising, but you know, you know, like that lunation in the first with Neptune there, there could be some kind of like healing around identity or self image or even just some like, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, with Nep Neptune can be a bit of escapist kind of stuff. So there could be something about like where, where Mercury and Virgo tends to be a bit more grounded, right? So that you might be seeing, your partner might be displaying a more kind of grounded, level-headed, sensible kind of thing. And then you can kind of read off of that, like how, how do those qualities show up in yourself? Kind of, and, and how do you play off of that in like are you similar in that way with your partner or is that a w area where you're different who are you more rational or more emotional those kinds of things um and you've got you've got in the 11th house you've got saturn uh fallen jupiter and pluto so i mean with that it, it may not really be the best time for um the whole the, the, there's a bit of a tension like well what am i trying to say the 11th house is trying to reach your goals um and the help that supports you but right now it's kind of a bit of a mess there um but that mercury in the 7th house is it was is might help to sort of mitigate things a little bit but it's uh yeah that 11th house stuff it's sort of like you're you're 
Jupiter is probably trying to give you some support there, but Jupiter is in its fall with Saturn and Pluto, so it's like you're getting support, but it's not. It may not really be good quality support, or it might be kind of like, oh, this is really the, this <laughs> this is the help that's coming through. It this is kind of a bit weak or something, or this is, or it's 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 like the idea of something that's become decayed or corrupted or something. It's sort of like the it's kind of suspicious or it's a kind of like sketchy or something, right? Um, Mars is there in the second house. Um, and that has to do with your wealth and finances and stuff like that. Um, and that's squaring off against this, the, the 11th house stuff. Right. And there's an interesting square between that. I'm not even, well, And, that, and if you look, that's a part of this T-square dynamic too with Venus in the fifth. So it's like, with Venus, in the, Venus actually takes her joy in the fifth house. So it's a good time anyways, like it, you, the watery, you know, intuitive signs, maybe get in touch with your creative side and with self-expression and creativity and stuff like that. Um, it's the opposition between that and the 11th house though, could be like it's not really you it's sort of having an obstacle with like you know bringing your creative vision to like getting it out there and connecting with others and getting the right help and support like it might just kind of feel like it's kind of dry and not like or you're not really getting the right assistance for your dreams and ambitions and stuff like that and with the more than the second it could be very much like you just feel like you're supporting it on your own kind of thing right mars being that very individualistic assertive do-it-yourself kind of planet um but mars is going to be going into a slowing down going into retrograde so it might kind of feel like you're running out of resources you may not have the same amount of free time or or you got to do some you know pick up a you know your your something's coming in the way you 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 may not have as much creative output over the next few months and stuff like that, but that's all again, part of this kind of process that's, I don't know, trying to work, work something out around these topics. Um, but so it's kind of a bit of a mess <laughs> to be honest for, Pi for Pisces, but I mean, you know, um, the, the again i think the advantage there for pisces is there there might be some room for a, so, uh, some self understanding that's brought up through relationships but um and then that's really being brought to a highlight with the the virgo season but in terms of you know professional goals and stuff like that it's kind of maybe you just have to be patient right now and kind of get through this year that's not the easiest year. Um, um, and then, yeah, and then, and then you're having Saturn and Jupiter moving to your 12th, which will be interesting, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, well, I think that's enough for now.